Ready? Mm -hmm. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Do I start? Yeah. Who starts? Yeah, go for it. What if we said it in tandem? (laughs) (laughs) Sure, no one would listen. (laughs) (laughs) Just the whole intro was both of us. I'm sure people would listen at least for the first 30 seconds. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, Okay. Well, we're already 22 seconds in. So (laughs) (laughs) we're already behind. We uh, told ourselves we would keep this to a tight 45 or less. Yes. Okay. Hi, take it or leafers. This is... Nope. E- <laughs> Hi. Take it. To take it or leafers. I was, I was addressing the take it or leafers. Is that, or is that what we're going with for this one? Our hello, Begonia buddies. And <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Begonia buddies. This is Ethan with the Take It or Leave It podcast. And I'm Nick Farringdon. Thanks for coming in again and listening. We have... Not necessarily any topics on a particular plant or necessarily a particular thing. We're just here to talk about some experiences that we have had. Yeah. In the last month or so, at least the last few episodes we released have been ones that we have recorded ahead of time, like a month or so ahead of time, knowing that we were going to be in our summer peak busy season. And so now we're getting a chance to sit down together in person in our St. Louis studio. And we were out today doing some video recording and had some really fun experiences there and have some uh, business updates on our end that we wanted to share with you guys in our horticulture journey, for lack of a better word. Yeah. So with some of those fun updates, we just wanted to share that with you guys in a quick episode. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. It's like where we're at finally, because it was, it was difficult, you know, for us to kind of get to that point where we could focus more on the podcast and, and get to a point where we felt like we could start releasing episodes that were more, what would you say, like relevant to what we were doing more immediately. Right. More, sometimes we had to do up to date, right. We had to do like some, some episodes that could be. Uh, thrown in whenever right because our schedules were still kind of wonky really crazy in spring and yeah summer. and i was still working full time at another garden center so that kind of made it even more difficult for us to to do that as i worked on my own business working full time at a garden center during the busiest time of the season while also doing the podcast you have your own business also trying to do podcasts what you're doing with the podcast is difficult because you have to do all the editing right and that's a very time consuming process sure you know it's like here you you know the audience will get a 30 minute episode but that means you had to sift through an hour long episode and and then another hour and then another hour oh my gosh (laughs) so you're doing a lot but yeah so where we're at now is at a point where we can find an easier way for us to both focus on this podcast. And I think we're going to start seeing some improvements in in our stories, our storytelling, our time management. And I'm really excited about that because at this point we only have up that we can go right <laughs> for the for yeah. podcast listeners. Right. Yeah. And you can always reach us either on our socials or on Facebook or Instagram. Our links are in the episode description show at take it or leave it pod.com if you want to send us an email with topics that you'd like to hear us talk about but yeah we're going to try to get more of our uh, personal experiences more current up-to-date stuff that's happening in our horticulture world down here between st louis and illinois and yeah kind of share share our experiences with you guys and always adding more comedy in yeah so I guess for me, where I'm at is I'm finally focusing outside of podcasts now, mm-hmm. full time on the Flora Foundry. Yeah, that's and a big change. Yes, yes, fully a hundred percent in. Fully a hundred percent. Yeah, no longer working at the garden center. And you had so much interest for your own personal business to get work done. Lots of commercial work, both commercial and residential. Yes. I had some, it was just at this point where I had enough people interested in in having some sort of contracted work done Mm -hmm. that it just wasn't going to be feasible for me to do that while also focusing on applying myself somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I guess say, you know, selfishly and there is time more, for the show. Right. There is more money to be made in working for myself than working in a garden center. Yeah, definitely. And, and I wish there was more money to be made working at a garden center. Unfortunately, you know, you get a lot of experience, but I have yet to find, you know, garden center where you make the kind of money are, are paid for that experience that you've accumulated over almost 10 years. Right. And you and I, but just both know how that is. You right. know, grateful for the places who have offered me employment. I'm not saying anything negative, um, yeah. but 
needed to do my own thing. And a lot of our experiences that have led to us having so many topics that we get asked all the time, a big chunk of that has come from interacting with so many dozens of people every day, customer flow through garden centers or as a grower, as a garden center manager, like we've both been in the past. Always have a passion or I shouldn't say necessarily passion, but I always have an appreciation for independent garden centers. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, It's a tough world and a very interesting world. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, I am full time being the owner of the Flora Foundry and have been working on some projects, just finished a large commercial landscape job. And I'm now, uh, I finished a personal residential job and I have several other in the works that I am still piecing together quotes yeah. for. Yeah. It's going to, it's nerve wracking, but also extremely exciting. Yeah. It's a different kind of stress. Yeah, we were talking about working for somebody else. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. To like really embrace the fact that you as a business owner are responsible for bringing in your income. Right. It's a totally weird thing. to. If you're like, I could go for a nap today. You don't get paid. (laughs) Right. You know, it's there's it's very much. You can also take the nap. You can also take right. that. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's a weird thing to, you know, because your whole life you are kind of like bred to do this nine to five. Mm-hmm. You know, even school is structured that way. Yeah. That's in a way why school is structured that way to kind of train you to go right into the workforce of working that eight to four, nine to five, ten to six mm-hmm. uh, sort of job. And now as your own business owner, it's not necessarily like that right. at all. And it's kind of nice this time of year, too, because you're like, if it's 95 degrees out, you can say, oh, I'm either going to work just in the morning or I'm going to go out. What I've been doing lately when it's crazy hot up in central Illinois is wait until the evening uh, or I'll wait until the peak heat of the day start right as it's on the downslope and end the day at dark, basically, when it starts to really cool off. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of makes it feel less intense because it's getting easier the longer the day goes. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so we're, we're both uh, now, I mean, you have been yep. um, for a number of years, but yeah. now we are both on that same page of being your own boss, running yep. your own company, the trials and errors that come with that, the the cycles of emotions that go with that, <laughs> right. which you have a little bit more experience handling than I do. And now because we both have a more fluid schedule or a schedule that you and I can control mm-hmm. more so mm-hmm. it allows us a, a more of an opportunity to work on this podcast. Right. And I think we're going to, I think we're both going to be happy with that. Definitely. And Definitely. hopefully our listeners are as well. Cause we've gotten a ton of positive feedback. People are liking uh, the name future compost <laughs> for our listeners. <laughs> Got some people, some feedback on that this week. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. People are enjoying the jokes. Maybe not as much as we do, you us could. hearing our own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, it, uh, you know, similar to you, I'm getting ready to wrap up a pretty big residential job here in the next couple of They're going to be adding more to it. Um, another side attachment, another, didn't you say they're, they're uh, you have since, to put together a quote for an additional uh, portion? Since last year, uh, another side of the yard was added. So essentially, a couple of years prior, I landscaped their whole front yard and then now fresh landscape, like brand new. Yeah. This is yeah. There was just, just grass tweaking a garden bed that already existed. Right. Right. Totally brand new install with drip irrigation, the whole thing. And then the following season, they decided to have the backyard done. Um, they're also listeners, so they know they'll know who we're talking about. And through you, actually, I was introduced to them, which was a fun thing. They said hi by the way. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot that. Yeah. 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 Wow. That is right. Yeah. Yeah. They mention you all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shucks. Yeah. Yeah. They like you a lot. They had to find somebody new as a go-to person at that nursery. Devastating. dare mess up. (laughs) These people that I, I'm sorry, (laughs) briefly forgot about until just now. I mean, you talk about them enough. Yeah. I'm familiar with them through you. Yeah. But I forgot that it was through me. Right. That it could be through you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. What That's is- a song title right there. I <laughs> forgot that it was through me that it could be through you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but so, yes, essentially then the next stage was to 
do landscaping in the backyard. They had a, a brand new deck installed. And towards the end of last season, I did all the full landscaping around the new deck. Uh, the plan was to do two, which ended up being kind of three, all three sides of the remaining sides of the backyard. And due to some delays from other contractors, uh, that three sides of the backyard portion ended up starting this year. So it's that that's what we're getting ready to wrap up. But in total, that backyard landscape is about 2,500 square feet of, okay. of brand new install. Okay. So it's a pretty big project. Hoo-wee. Yeah. But I'm never exhausted. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And here I am, one of my future projects that I'll be doing, I'm like, oh, I got 121 square feet of sod I have to install. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a much larger project than that, but that's just one portion of right, it that'll right. be the sod installation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I kind of, well, shall we jump now into our fun park excursion? Yeah, we, we, so I'm down visiting Ethan for these few days here over the weekend, and we were going to get some stuff recorded for you all and part of that we wanted to get out and shoot some video so that we can interact with you visually and not just audio through the episode releases Um, so we will have some upcoming uh, varying length segments of video for you guys that'll be on uh, shorter clips will be on facebook and instagram but then full length videos will be on youtube for those of you are interested in more than just the snippets right but so our first stop was to go to a park relatively close by to to where you live and knew that there was a um a rose garden that was maintained there right and by local local gardeners in the community and it was meant to be just a quick stop to look at some roses we went there to i think the main idea that that i at least had in my head was maybe we'll find a rose there that wasn't properly pruned or hasn't been properly maintained that maybe we could make a video of how to properly prune a rose to get the most out of it so you don't get these weedy nasty or we get that so often God. a lot of people have like knockout, knockout roses for example yeah and knockout roses are kind of sold and marketed as being this low maintenance shrub right and in my opinion no rose is low maintenance right and there are some that can be easier to care for than others and knockouts certainly are very adaptable to as far as roses go sure adaptable to a number of conditions and once established can be relatively drought tolerant and full sun and little bit more disease resistant but anyway i have a problem with going off on tan- once you start talking about plants you give me a plant to talk about i'm gonna like oh is that my pedestal <laughs> you want me to stand up there oh there it is oh yeah yeah okay <laughs> Uh, so uh, Ethan soap. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, we went there for roses and I don't think we we didn't make any videos on roses. We did take some pictures of Japanese beetles on the roses. on roses. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we went there and found that there were so many other things to talk about. We saw horribly infested uh, oak trees with gall. Like yep. Some of the worst I've ever seen. It was really terrifying. Like to look on at. the brink of death due to gall. Right. And so we discussed that and uh, we made some video on that that we'll be releasing on our social media platforms. Then we, what else did we, what did we do after that? Uh, we saw some Japanese beetles on the perennial hibiscus. We went into kind of some of the differences between shrubs and perennials because the perennial hibiscus. Visually, it looks like a shrub because they are often three, four, five feet tall and wide and they have a big, heavy stem. So visually looking like a shrub. Yeah. But uh, they do die back to the ground at the end of the season. So they are technically a perennial. So we talked a a little perennial. yeah. Yeah. Talked a little bit about that difference. I do get asked about that quite a bit. Some of the Japanese beetles on there, like I said, we happen to just walk by a low hanging maple tree branch and I spotted what ended up being some honeydew from aphids. And there was a ladybug there actively hunting the aphids, which was which is kind of perfect fun. because we had already posted right. a picture of exactly that to tie right. into a podcast episode. What was that? Two podcasts ago, maybe three, two or three podcasts ago. Yeah. Yeah. Part so, one on, on garden pest management. So yeah. we had another 
great visual of that exact same post where you have a ladybug and then you have the aphids and there's honeydew there, although there's no ants this time around. Right. No um, ants farming the aphids. But, but you had the aphids and the honeydew, which is their secretion that they, their, their excrement that they uh, left out. And then the ladybug right there, yeah. hungry, carnivorous, dainty little ladybug that's just massacring aphid after aphid and ladybug we respect you and we love you and thank you for all the hard work you're doing <laughs> <laughs> and so i think after that we were kind of aimlessly wandering around from ash tree to ash tree to find a good example of boreholes from emerald ash borer and while we did see horrible conditioned ash trees which pretty much is any ash tree anymore yeah they're not looking too hot by now because of the ash borer but we had a hard time with finding some that had like really good active boreholes that we could see low enough for us to reach yeah right but definitely could see the damage from the ash borer mm-hmm. oh the pear tree that's the other thing oh, that we did the, yes. the pear tree fire, the blight fire blight on the pear which so we, we also mentioned that. those both of those issues in the garden pest and management episode mhm hey ethan do you hear that what oh it's an ad real quick thanks for listening to our episode today you can stay in touch with us by supporting us on Patreon. We are at patreon.com slash take it or leave it. And we'll have bonus content on Patreon for all of our subscribers there where you can get extra episodes and snippets from the show that we don't release to all the other platforms. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube at Take It or Leaf It Pod. And you can also visit our website, Take It or Leaf It Pod.com. If you have any questions or comments or any stories you'd like us to research or talk about, or hell, send us a picture of a plant you want us to identify, you can send that information to show at Take It or Leaf It Pod.com. You can also follow us on our individual Instagrams. I am at Hortwise. H O R T W I S E. And I am at N Farringdon, N F A R R I N G D O N. Thanks so much. We'll get back to the episode. Oh, you got me. <laughs> so we we had some great, just in a very short period of time, just a number of great things for us to talk about there. And we were both nerding out and excited because we went there for kind of a quick stop and ended up being there for like three hours. <laughs> I had no anticipation that, or I, yeah, I just, I, I just, I didn't anticipate we were going to be able to come up with that much content right. in that park in particular. Yeah, It's not like Missouri Botanical Gardens or Morton Arboretum. It's just a, it's just a city park. Just a park. Yeah. And it was just a, a, a slew of things that we could just do something with and talk about. And in our passion, as we're nerdy and letting that as, horticultural As we're the only two people flag, <laughs> wandering around looking really closely at the tree trunks. Videoing each other. Right. <laughs> um, Some people noticed. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a cool thing. And there was with these two ladies that yep. were walking by with their dog and when we were done recording, I think this was, we had already recorded the oak tree issue and the mm-hmm. pear tree issue. Mm-hmm. I don't think we had gotten further than that. And they walked by and they had apologized because they were talking while we were recording videos of, yeah, of each other. Yeah, they were walking by. Yeah. And we we're like, oh, sorry for what? And they were just, you know, saying, sorry, you know, we knew you were recording and we were trying not to be picked up by that, blah, blah, blah. But then they started, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. And we gave them information about who we are and what we were doing. And they just came out of the woodworks with they question off a after whole bunch question of qu- yeah. after qu- Once they realized they were already interested in what we were talking about, I think could grasp that we were plant savvy people right. based upon what they could eavesdrop of our conversation. Mm-hmm. And then once we confirmed that, yes, we are yeah, horticulturist, plant, plant savvy things, right. we're recording for our, our podcast that is horticultural related man, we should have charged them. (laughs) (laughs) They just had question after question after question, but it's, that's so within our, our realm of comfortability from our time at garden centers where we're just used to answering question after question, just thrown from all different directions and, and having hopefully an answer for most of them. 
They had questions about sunflowers and gosh. Oh, we talked about butterflies and pollinators. Yes, and, and declines. They were talking about how they'd really noticed butterflies coming later and later and, and general kind of decline in bees and butterflies around their plants. They were talking about some of the very specific pollinator friendly plants that they had planted in their yards expecting to see a lot of butterflies and, and honeybees and they're like, Hey, what's going on? Like, why isn't anything visiting? Yeah. Hummingbirds, same thing. And so we kind of got into that a little bit with them. I explained on, I'm in the same boat. I have a large planter at my house designated just to that. Yeah. Uh, more specifically for swallowtails. And I, you know, I know a lot of people are doing things for the monarchs and I think that's super great, mm -hmm. but I decided I was like, well, since I know so many people, especially where I was working at previously this year, people would come out just for milkweed, milkweed. and other, thank you. Thank yep. you. F and tell people like, yeah, that's great. It's a nectar source for all pollinators, but only the monarch is going to eat it as a think, host plant. Right. And that's always a unique convert or a fun conversation. I'd say to have with people of just clarifying to them that most larvae will not just eat anything. Right. And they have while, specific host plants that, that they, they prefer. tend yep. to go after. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so mine is, is more for the swallowtail. I have fennel in there. I have tithonia, which is Mexican sunflower is a common name for it. Lantana petunias. So I have nectar sources in there to attract them and the bright colors that should attract them. And then the fennel, which is what they would lay the eggs on and would be the food source for the larva as yep, it would the get its metamorphosis. Yeah. And I am also not seeing anything on there. Right. I've seen hummingbirds. I've mm -hmm. seen lots of bees. I'm not seeing any butterflies. Yeah. So we had that discussion with, uh, with the ladies and I know we talked about other things, but you know, they went their own way and we gave them our podcast information yeah. and charged them five hundred dollars for answering all their <laughs> questions. All their questions they just had in their pocket, which is right. great. Yeah, they were like, "Oh, you should have charged more." I'm like, oh, rats. <laughs> so, and uh, it was shortly after that that another guy we made it what a hundred feet up if, if that, and we, here now we are, and we're like looking at trees, ash trees. We're like looking under like the bark that was kind of peeling off and looking at holes and discussing, Oh, those are woodpecker. Those are woodpecker yep. Yeah. You can say, Oh, you can see the linear line there. That's a woodpecker. And you're like scouring for that D shaped exit hole for that. The ash borer will have. And we're seeing lots of cambium layer traveling, you mm -hmm. know, the cambium mm -hmm. layer being below the bark level and you can see what the larva has done kind of etched in yep. that little, that little Zigzag. snaky line where the larva eats. Mm -hmm. And this guy just comes out, walks right up to us. And I, I honestly thought he was going to say, you guys can't be filming. For some right. reason, that was my first thought I in my did brain. Too. I did too. He's he got had his a black shirt on. Shirt uniform. Yeah. Yeah. And he like walks up to us. He's, you know, older gentleman and, you know, little. Like, is he like park security? Right. I'm like, is he going to tell us that, you know, he's like, you guys need a permit if you're going to be <laughs> right. recording. Um, and he just starts saying, hey, you guys talking about trees and plants? I'm like, yes. And he just like starts totally opened up. Oh, my gosh. He was yeah. so happy to have people that he could just talk to about plants. Right. And he was telling us about some of the small little plant installations closer to the convention center where yep. this park was a, a part of yep. and Which, telling us about it that. It seemed like he worked more interior, but then also did some ground stuff. He worked in the, for the theater. So he's theater staff yep. for this convention center, but also helped do some of the landscaping little. Which it seemed like that was kind of a, a passion project that he kind of took on. Right. Yeah. And with the annuals and the flowers and, and he was, was telling us about perennial ground covers yeah, and, and funky landscaping. stuff at his house that he varieties that he had. And so he threw out, what was he saying? Um, perennial impatience. What did he say? Heart, hearty impatience. Hearty impatience. Something like that. It was what he was saying, which yeah. didn't ring any bell to me. But he described he was, him as orange, like an orange. We'll have to look that up. And an orange flower that kind of hung down right. and was cornucopia shaped. shaped. Yeah. And in my brain, my first thing was like, is he thinking of like the native columbine? Because oh, native columbine uh -huh. will do that. And sure. it's got that 
that orange flower that hangs down, mm-hmm. kind of tube shaped. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't Although necessarily he say, did say they were blooming now. Right, which Columbine would already be done. Yes. And More the native ones sometimes can have these like sporadic flushes of reblooms, yeah. but but not covered like the way he described. Yeah, he said they were fully blooming, hardy in patience. Yeah. And yeah, we have to do some research on that because yeah. that was that definitely threw He's me. like, come on by and take a look at him. Hey, just total strangers. He's a member of a in a yeah, in a local garden club. Yeah. And was talking about all these things, you know, this he used to work at another garden. He used to work at a garden club himself. Mm. See, wasn't that how he acquired all these other supplies that he was telling us we could just come by and take, even if he wasn't home? Uh, I, he did say he worked in something that was horticulture related for a little bit and before the theater. This company, when they would you know, do a landscape for someone and they're essentially stripping it of any existing plants or hardscape material. They would take it to this, this garden center that he worked at or was affiliated with. Mm -hmm. And they called it the graveyard where material from jobs, just, just like a little bit of excess of things stayed and, and any employees were allowed to just take whatever they wanted. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, I just have so much stuff. Yeah. Bricks and retaining wall blocks and plants at my house. And he was like, you guys got to come over. You know, I can't wait for you to show you guys all the stuff that I have. Yeah. And just as such an interesting guy. And yeah, very really, fun to talk to. I thoroughly enjoyed that interaction. Yeah. And you could see he was also genuinely happy with being able to just yeah. like out of the blue, talk to some people about plants that shared his passion. Cause he talked about it. He's like, there's so many, times it especially in the world of horticulture people just don't care people just do not care about their garden plants their immediate environment and he was saying how even kind of locally in the area like yeah there are a lot of trees around here but all the little corner areas of plantings and and green space with flowers or or anything ornamental wise have just kind of fallen by the wayside with more and more development Mm -hmm. so he was very excited to to kind of well like you said afterwards when we got in the car to leave after finding so much cool stuff and having interaction with these people who approached us kind of what you had said was three total strangers right three complete strangers that we talked with for several minutes i think your words were they saw people with a passion and gravitated towards it. Right. And we got I mean, to witness that. He was that. so excited. He was so passionate about plants and so excited to just talk to two random people who who could relate and have that back and forth rapport over over something that, yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. It was such an interesting thing. Like, yeah, we, our passion was visible. Yeah. And because of that, people were drawn to it and approached us. And started just asking us questions about this, that, and the other, and their plant-related questions. It was a really cool, yeah, it was a yeah. cool experience. It felt, it was vindicating. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, it felt like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing with this podcast. Right. You know, it's like, okay, that was certainly fuel to continue to do what we are doing and to find ways of approaching and engaging audiences to share our passion with people and just what we really love to do yeah, uh, and excited to find new ways of discussing things and approaching topics and then discussing those topics, especially in ways that people want to engage with Mm -hmm. and just things that they simply want to listen to. Yeah. I thought it was really neat too afterwards Or through the interaction with the first two ladies, I don't know if you noticed when they first started talking to us, the one kind of said like, oh, my, my friend is, is more the gardener. But in talking with us, it kind of coaxed out of her. She's like, oh, actually, like I, I have a lot of plant questions too. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like both people, regardless of how much they garden or how much gardening knowledge they have or plant, you know, horticulture, whatever knowledge they have, it seemed like both people really were able to find some kind of benefit through that interaction. I thought that was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, that was our park experience where we went to with the mindset of let's talk, maybe find something about roses. Yeah. We found a slew of other videos and then. Yeah, let's just pop offer- in and out real quick and head to our, our other destination, which we never even ended up going to because we found we had so much fun. Right. It's such a fun time at this random city park. And then from there, we did go to another park that was just like a quick trip. We spent so much time at this park that we didn't anticipate spending. Right. So our schedule became a little bit tighter. So we went to another local park that was like 10 minutes away from where we were currently at. And that park was way more crowded. So it wasn't, you know, man, there's hundreds of people at that mm-hmm. park mm-hmm. where there was a dozen people at the park that we right. left before. The second park was definitely more recreation focused. Yes. Yeah. But there was this back area that we wandered to, mm-hmm. uh, walking past all the, walking past the giant gang of ducks and geese right. that was there and went to this back area. And here's all these people playing baseball, fishing, running around, playing on the parks, whatever. And here we are, these two dudes all the way in the back staring at weeds. Right by the edge of the tree line. (laughs) Which, even at the first park, part of us attracting attention to ourselves, I had the thought after, of how often do you go to a park and see two adult men very closely examining the trunks of trees? (laughs) Yeah. So naked. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We weren't naked. No. Um, So yeah, not at the first park and no, no one approached us at, (laughs) at the second park. And we're also way, like we were so far, we were not near the sports. We were not near the pond. We were not near. We were hundreds of feet away from everybody else. We were just like wandering off to the woods. Yes. And we saw everything from, we didn't know what we were looking for. We were just looking to see if there was going to be anything that we could turn into a video that we could talk about. And we ended up taking lots of pictures of insects. Right. (laughs) And videos of insects. We yeah. saw leaf hoppers. You saw a really cool red and blue striped leaf hopper. Yep. We saw a couple of butterflies. We got some video. Of, yeah. And yeah, lots true. of ladybugs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all of their different, different stages. Stages of the ladybugs. You saw a woolly aphid. Yep. And so I think that was I'm pretty sure that was my first time seen the woolly ape that thing was active well they're around. so they look like a little puff of white fuzz flying through the air so they're so easy to miss right like i that was something that fascinated me even as a little kid so i always like had an eye out for them because as soon as i you know when i was a little kid and i was like wait a minute and you like wait and it lands on your hand and you realize it has like two little antennae or two little black wings Mm -hmm. and two little black dots of eyes. You're like, wait, so this is a bug. It looks like fuzz. Yeah. It looks like a piece of fuzz. Those have always fascinated me. And here we saw this one just floating around and flying around. And it's like, gosh, it's like, I think I've only seen those in a book and I've probably seen them many, many times, but because my eye wasn't trained Mm -hmm. to look like it, I'm so, when I think aphids, my brain automatically goes to the green ones or the black ones or the yellow ones that are on the underside of leaves or clustered on the stem. I've never seen woolly aphids in a cluster in a group on a plant. I've only ever seen them floating through the air one or two or three at a time. Yeah. So... Yeah, that was super fun. Mm -hmm. And then we're having debates on what was Queen's Anne lace and what was poison hemlock and what was common ragweed versus giant ragweed and discussing like, why do people confuse ragweed with goldenrod? Right. And because a lot of times, you know, I hear in the garden center, like, oh, I don't want goldenrod. That's what people are allergic to. Like, no, 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 no. You're thinking ragweed blooms at the same time. Very similar flower. The plants don't look alike at all. The foliage doesn't at all. They're both green, but that's pretty much it. The flower, sure, I can see that, but the foliage, mm -mm. no similarities at all. Right. So anyway, yeah, we we saw all kinds of really cool things back there. While fully recognizing 
that we were spending our day looking at weeds next to the woods. <laughs> I was very happy as we were walking through this park, like yeah. just looking at the ground right. and there was so much clover and the bees were buck wild on the yeah, clover at that true. park. Yeah. There were bees everywhere all over that clover. Yep. Oh, that was really cool. That yeah. made me very happy. Yeah. There's still some out there. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of butterflies. Right. Starting to see bees. Yeah. So there's lots of lots of bees all over that clover. Yeah. So yeah, that was our that was our day. Yeah. So between some of those personal updates on our ends with finishing up business related projects uh, for our own companies doing landscaping and and having such a positive experience at this park where we just went to take a couple quick videos and move on we decided to kind of share this as an episode like this is part of the the horticulture life we live <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and uh stay tuned keep an eye out for our videos that we'll be releasing over the next few weeks yeah we will have and they're all like 30 seconds to five minutes tops, basically. Yeah. Little, so th- little short videos. Yeah. So we're going to, for our social media pages like Facebook and Instagram, we'll, if it's like a five minute video, you know, we'll narrow that down to the, the quick snippets. But for the full videos, you will have access to that on our YouTube page as well as our Patreon page. Yeah. Some of the longer ones I think we'll definitely have on Patreon. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, that kind of, that's our... That's it for this week's episode. Yeah. Just a quick one for you guys. Just a quick one. We nailed that in in under 40 minutes. Yeah. Nice. Very good. All right. That was under under goal. We're under goal. We are under goal. Yeah. So now we can talk about other random stuff for five minutes and end up going 10 minutes over. <laughs> <laughs> or we can let these people go. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to like force some conversation out of here. Yeah. They've already stopped listening. As you look around the room. Yeah. Oh, I feel they like already that professor that turned around to like write something on the board and the class has already left. Right. <laughs> Before you go. Yep. Bye, people. Is that it? Are we done? <laughs> this has been the podcast. Take it or leave it podcast. Yeah. I think this has been the take it or leave it podcast this time. Yeah. I'm Nick Farrington. I'm Ethan Weiss. And until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>